LeBron James, Los Angeles Lakers, you may have heard of him, Kobe Bryant. Why are we talking about Kobe? In a LeBron highlight, we'll find out in a moment. The Knicks gave the Lakers more of a game than many thought, but L.A. pulled away, thanks in part to LeBron's 21 points. That left him just 45 points away from yet another milestone, passing Kobe for third place on the NBA's all-time scoring list. Right now, LeBron is averaging 25.1 points per game this season. He is on pace to become the second player in history to average 25 per game in their 17th season or later. Basically, average 25 when they're old. The other, guess who? Kobe. In 2012-2013, both have obviously had, have had, tremendous careers, are having. Take a look now at how they view each other. I look at Kobe Bryant as the best in our league. LeBron has done so much for the game. He's an incredible player and the best scorers this game has ever seen. He's one of the best that we've ever seen. He's done so much for what he's been able to do for the league. I'm just trying to put on a show for him and give him a reason to be like, okay, we might come to another game. Kobe Bryant to me is one of my favorite role models. When he first came into the league, you know, he used to call me and bend my ear for advice. Kobe guarding LeBron, James on Bryant. It gets to a point where you be like, you know, I didn't think I could get better today until now you got to guard Kobe Bryant. Hey, hey, what's the rip? What's the rip? When what's I think of LeBron, rip? I think of sheer force you know, as being the initial thrust of his game. He's definitely um, somebody that you could be around all the time. When he and I are around each other, we're always talking, always kind of laughing. He just tried to dunk on me, Craig. <laughs> oh, no. He just tried to dunk on me. <laughs> I think it really went to another level when we played on the Olympic team together in 08. Oh, you like my look? Got that Kobe Bryant look going. What's up? <laughs> it's more like a big brother relationship. It, it, it kind of always has been. He looks at me like his younger brother for sure. And, uh, and that's pretty cool, man. When he first came on board, I said, listen, you are now family now. You're part of this tradition. So if there's anything you need, just let me know. Welcome here with open arms. Just to have that support, you know, from one of the greatest legs I ever play. Um, it was just special for me. Dave McMenamin with the Lakers as they face the Nets at Barclays Center tonight. And Dave, 45 points away from yet another milestone for LeBron. What is his mindset coming into tonight's game? Well, Sage Steele, LeBron had the reason or the uh, occasion to reflect on what Kobe Bryant meant in his life. And he talked to us last night in Madison Square Garden about when he was in grade school and high school, thinking about the potential of going straight from high school to the NBA. He was looking at Kobe Bryant as his main motivating factor. Someone who came into the league at 17 years old and set the league on fire. And LeBron wanted to follow in his very same footsteps. Now, he admitted that they are very different players. He said the way that they are similar is they both have an intense will to win and they want to get better every single year they're in the game. But he called Kobe a natural born scorer. He's more a facilitator. He said, hey, we would have been great teammates together as oh, you yeah. saw in the Olympic Games. Oh, yeah. By the way, the last time LeBron scored 45 points, November of 2018, and he put up 51 at Miami. Sam. Uh, tonight, the first time LeBron will face Kyrie Irving since Kyrie joined the Nets, but only if Kyrie's hamstring is okay. Mr. Last Game, Dave, what can you tell us about his status tonight? Yeah, Kyrie Irving is set to return to the lineup after missing that last game. You're also going to get AD, Anthony Davis, in the lineup tonight. He was questionable because he tweaked that bruised backside injury last night against the Knicks, but he was able to feel good enough in pregame warm-ups to go. JaVale McGee will not play. The assumption that you're going to have Dwight Howard in the lineup for him. And we're still waiting on word for uh, Kyle Kuzma has a sore ankle and Rajon Rondo. We'll see if those guys will also suit up for the Lakers so they can keep up their winning ways on this. This road trip it's been a successful one so far and they'd like to get another win absolutely lebron by the way nine and two all time against his former teammate and kyrie irving tip off eight o'clock eastern there in brooklyn dave thank you enjoy seeing lebron and the lakers who took the court at madison square garden a short time ago and as zion will tonight lebron arrived on the nba scene back on october 29 2003 it was in sacramento against the kings here's a look back at lebron's nba debut 17 years ago you think you'll be nervous? I know I'll be nervous, but I think once the game starts, I'll be ready to play. There is the man of the hour in probably the most anticipated debut of any first-year athlete in any sport. LeBron James' first shot is good. Here he comes the other way. There's your first James Jam of his career. He's not disappointing me, I'm telling you right now. This time he dishes to his trainer, Davis. 
How about that? This is getting out of control. Oh, way off balance over a seven-footer, and he knocked it down. Little dipsy do for LeBron James. Don't show him everything. <laughs> Not a <laughs> first game. What's your assessment of your first game? You know, just try to pull out a victory and uh, try to steal one on the West Coast. You know, it didn't work out our way, but we got another game tomorrow. We're going to try to get one tomorrow. Gosh, October of 2003, and that was the first 25 of what has become 33,578 points for LeBron James during his career. He enters tonight's game against the Knicks, just 66 points shy of passing Kobe for sole possession of third place on the NBA's all-time scoring list. LeBron has averaged, by the way, over 28 points per game in his career at the current Madison Square Garden. That is third most all-time behind Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Yes, professional basketball comes to Madison Square Garden one night only. LeBron and the Lakers in Fun City to visit the New York Knickerbockers. Our NBA and Laker man Dave McMenamin is at MSG. LeBron at the Garden is always money, but as we just saw, he's hunting all-time greatness too. That's the priority? Oh, absolutely. Now, his camp is well aware of him tracking down Kobe Bryant in the record book, 66 points away from passing him as the number three all-time leading scorer in league history. The last game he had against Boston, someone in his camp told me, hey, what do you think? 40 tonight, 41 of the garden? Because he needed 81 at that point. Now, 66 is a tall task. The most he's ever scored in the game is 61. But he's a guy who loves history, guy who loves narratives. 14 years ago to the day, Kobe Bryant scored 81. So why not pass it with 66? A man can hope. Let's see some history tonight at the Garden versus, you know, not that good of a Knicks team. Yeah, and the, the historical rivalry continues into the ages. Dave McMenamin from MSG uh, before LeBron and the Lakers versus the Checks Notes New York Knickerbockers. Any thanks, Dave? Thank you. It's been a lot of pontificating, speculating about what Zion will do tonight now that he's finally a return engagement or bout. But how much, assess this from your day there, how much damage has this done to Bill Self and to his Kansas basketball image? Well, I mean, I think you have to go back to the notice of allegations of the NCAA investigation, and that's something that Kansas is currently dealing with. Uh, they're in the appeals process now, but this is certainly a stain on the program, and I think this is the most difficult chapter of Bill Self's career. I sat in his office two years ago, and he told me that he doesn't want to coach past the age of 60. He turns 58 this year, mm. and I don't think he ever imagined that he'd be dealing with an NCAA investigation and now trying to explain to the world why one of his players picked up a stool in the middle of a fight. So it's been a rough stretch for the entire program, but especially Bill Self as well. Myron Metcalf in Lawrence, where the Jayhawks went from possibly punching their ticket to definitely punching their rivals. Thank you, Myron. Coach Seth Greenberg in Bristol. All right, the suspensions. First by Coach Bill Self, the indefinite one, and now superseded by these four from the Big 12, and the key to that being 12 for, for DeSosa. Your, your reaction to these, are they appropriate? Are they the right amount? Is it, was it done with the idea of avoiding the rematch against K-State? Without a doubt, it was done with the idea of avoiding the matchup with K-State, and that is intelligent to do because you don't want to yep. put him in that, in that situation. You don't want to put the other players in that situation. It would have been a volatile situation. Ownership in the octagon of doom, it's appropriately named. It would have been absolutely brutal. Now, you know, to me, look, let's face it. When he stood over the Gordon kid, that situation escalated. Now, James Love was getting, seven, I think, seven games suspension. He came off the bench. He wasn't even suited up for the game. I think his suspension should almost match that of Sylvia D'Souza. I would have suspended D'Souza uh, for the rest of the season because I think as it escalated, even though he was protecting himself, I thought that he did some things that were totally inappropriate picking up that chair and thank goodness other people around stepped in and you can say well he didn't swing it he didn't swing it but it, to me and I'm not speculating it looked like some type of intent the other thing I'm concerned about and I'm not concerned about just surprised about the players that left the bench none of the other players that left the bench were suspended at all mm. so basically I'm not saying you're condoning that behavior but I think that should have been addressed in some manner all right, Coach, uh, and we'll go through it again. James Love got eight, Antonio Gordon got three, DeSosa 12, and David McCormick two. Seth Greenberg at World Headquarters. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Keith. There you see the clock continuing to tick. Just over three hours until 
Zion Williamson, the number one overall pick in last June's NBA draft, finally makes his NBA debut. Let's take you back to some preseason action. We didn't get to see much of him, but we did see a few impressive games. This is against the Bulls on October 9th in the pass to Lonzo Ball, who sets him up for that. We all know from last year,